This puree will eventually become vegan leather. It's made from thousands of mangoes that would otherwise be thrown away. Now, this waste can be used to make wallets, handbags, and shoes. But can it compete with the massive leather industry? We visited the headquarters of Fruit Leather in the Netherlands to find out. Fruit Leather collects around 1,500 mangoes each week from a Dutch importer. The quality control requires that we cut the mangoes. We cannot sell them anymore. So I wanted to have an outlet for that instead of just throwing it away like trash. It's a win-win as we uh, receive the waste uh, from them for free and uh, they don't have to pay anymore to get rid of their mango waste. Back at their studio, co-founders Hugo and Kuhn start making the leather. First, a machine de-stones the mangoes and then crushes the fruit into a pulp. The mixture pumps through a tube into a large vat. Next, Hugo mixes several additives that will turn the mango pulp into a leather-like material. I'm checking if our uh, measurements are right. My meter tells me that I have to add a little bit more of our additives. Perfect, yo. When it looks right, Hugo pours the mixture onto metal baking trays and smooths it out to create an even thickness. Then, the trays go in a dehydrator overnight. Before we dry it, it always has this light cram uh, color. But after we dry it, it tends to look very different based on the type of mango that we use. So, for instance, a Palmer mango will give a more brownish material. Keith mango will give a more black material. Finally, the sheets go to a leather finishing facility to be coated in a protective glaze. Rico and his family have been in the leather business since 1952, but this is the first time they've processed vegan leather. We use the same process, but it's different uh, material. So it responds differently to uh, heat or to the finishing products we use. First, he measures the thickness of each sheet. Then they mix resins to make the coating. And it makes a little film on top of the sheet so it will be protected from the elements. A machine presses a thin layer of protective coating onto the leather. When the sheets pass through, they go onto a, a conveyor and that will roll into an oven. The 100 degrees Celsius heat helps the coating dry. Then the sheet hangs on racks to cool and dry completely. Each one undergoes this process multiple times to make it more durable. Next. Another machine applies heat and pressure to combine the layers of coating. The final step is the design. This embossing machine can make the leather look and feel like animal skin. Then the leather is sold to designers around the world. Hugo and Kuhn first came up with the idea for fruit leather back in 2015. We wanted to turn something valueless into something that's a, that has value. Eventually, with a lot of experimenting, we came up with uh, the material that we have today. A big part of this process was deciding which fruit to use. When we first started, we didn't know that a certain fruit might lead to better material. Actually, in such a way that we even tried processing watermelons. Turns out there's not a lot of fibers inside watermelon. It's mainly water. They settled on mangoes because the fruit was easy to work with. Later, we found out how much mango Holland actually imports. More than half of the mangoes in Europe are imported or traded by the Netherlands. And around 12% of food in the Netherlands is wasted. We are able to get a very large amount of resource to make our material. That is why we decided to stick with the mango. Hugo and Kuhn also want to reduce emissions another way. We saw that all kind of chemicals were being used to tan the leather with all CO2 that comes from the tanning process. The chemicals used to tan leather can be toxic to both humans and the environment. There's also the methane emissions that come from raising cattle. If we reduce the number of cows, then we also reduce the amount of greenhouse gases. But some experts say it's not that simple. 
leather is not primarily what's driving the cattle industry. And I think that there's a pretty compelling argument to be made that as long as beef production is still continuing, that we should make use of these hides. Vegan leather also comes with its own challenges. Although some of it is made from mushrooms or pineapples, most is made from plastic. And this still leaves a large carbon footprint. People started realizing that polyurethane leather, which is made from oil, is not the solution. In 2020, the synthetic leather market was valued at over $30 billion. And one study predicts it will grow to over $40 billion in the next six years. But that's still only a fraction of the leather industry, which was valued at nearly $400 billion, 13 times more than its synthetic counterpart. We do need these new alternative materials that have just a different environmental profile and hopefully a smaller carbon footprint. But for small companies like Fruit Leather, it's hard to compete. Right now, Fruit Leather is only able to produce 80 square meters of leather per month. That's about 250 pairs of shoes. The final product costs around $22 per square foot. And the small size of each sheet means the company can only make certain products. Eventually, we want to work towards creating the material on a giant roll so that we can also uh, increase our production capacity, but also uh, expand the range of products that the material can be applied to. The mango leather also doesn't last as long as traditional leather. The upholstery of a car needs to last like 10 years. This is something I wouldn't be able to withstand now. But they are still working to make the product more durable. And Hugo and Kuhn say their goal isn't to replace cow leather altogether. This process has been completely thought out and we started in 2015. So we are not gonna suddenly replace a product that has been around for thousands of years. Still, they are aiming to make leather production easier on the environment, one mango at a time. <laughs>